What's up, people? Dark Fool in the house. How you doing, guys? It's been a while. Um, this is a video response to Jason Sorrell asking me a bunch of serious questions about my middle path, which I welcome and thank you so much, Jason, for your patience. I apologize that it took this long uh, to make a response. Um, uh, first of all, your video uh, couldn't have come at a worse time. So many things happened. I had some time to make videos on my own and and pump them out right and left, which is why I made all those for Sticks, Hex, and Hammer uh, when that was going down. Uh, but I wasn't able to get to yours because um, people that were out of the house were on vacation, which is why I was able to do things on my own time. Now i got to work around other people's schedules and not interfere and blah, blah, blah. You know how that goes. So I apologize for not coming out earlier. Um, just giving you a, a heads up in this video, it's also going to seem like it's going to be very scripted. That's because, two reasons. Number one, uh, when I first made uh, my video, I did it coming home from work, had a few drinks, did not turn out well. So I'm redoing it. Uh, it was also very unscripted. Things were just like, <clears throat> didn't go so well. Uh, I know I'm kind of taking up so much time explaining everything, but, uh, you know, um, it's going to seem like it's very scripted this time, but at least the answers are there. Um, I'm going to try to come out and be more uh, human. I try to keep a good balance between script and not script. You, you know, you were on the ooze. You know how it goes. So without further ado, um, I'm also going to be taking clips of your video, putting it in with mine to show what the questions were, what the answers are, etc. So here we go. I take issue though with the whole path identifier concept. The left hand path, right hand path dichotomy, as you rightly point out, it's a dichotomy and it's out there and it's the way, you know, people identify one way or the other with themselves, with the world around them. It's the way they try to put things in different boxes. It's the way we sort things and organize information. It's artificial. It doesn't really exist. Since you asked this question twice, I'm going to save my answer for this um, until the very end. And it's also one of the easier questions for me to answer, so uh, I'll get right back to it, okay? You say with this middle path that you're going to pick and choose things from the right-hand path and left-hand path and bring them together, and that's going to be your path. But why isn't it not just your path? Why isn't it Dark Fool's path? With this middle path concept, it sounds to me like there's going to be a, a Jason Sorrell middle path, there's going to be a Dark Fool middle path, there's going to be a Scott Bayou middle path. There's going to be a Barack Obama middle path. You know, all these, you know, anybody who invests in this concept, anybody who agrees with this concept and decides to use it as an identifier will have their own path. How do you avoid then, this is question one, if everybody is to determine for themselves what things are going to draw from, from one side or the other, how do you keep these people from squabbling and saying, no, no, this is legitimate middle path stuff and what you're doing goes too far left or too far right? How do you keep the squabbling that we see going on in both the right-hand and left-hand path, how do you keep that squabbling from happening? How does the middle path address the ultimate uh, divisions that will occur? Ah, very good question. Uh, I want to respond to that with uh, another question back to you, Jason. How can you possibly control such a thing? You know, how can you possibly control human nature like that? The conflicts are going to arise. Uh, it's in how these conflicts are resolved that determine whether uh, these paths are truly middle path or not, or whether these individuals are uh, middle path individuals or not. Uh, harmonization rather than infighting is key in uh, determining whether or not these paths are middle paths. Uh, if the parties involved can come to some sort of compromise or middle ground within their individual ideas, and can continue to work harmoniously uh, with one another, then great. If they cannot, then they have to take on the approach of agreeing to disagree. Reason for agreeing to disagree, uh, it's twofold. It demonstrates for uh, transcendental reasons the ability to let go, live and let live, that in the grand scheme of the whole middle path that uh, things are allowed to branch out. Okay. Um, but politically, it also cuts back on the infighting and it creates bonds. Now, it's not as strong as finding a compromise between the two, um, but if you can create, you know, but it, it doesn't create that infighting. There's no tension, so at least there's not that. Agreeing to disagree may not be the strongest option, 
but it doesn't hurt the whole middle path movement, you know, on the the mundane political front. Uh, finally, if a group lab uh, a group who labels themselves as middle path persists in trying to push their will and their agenda onto others, especially upon others within the middle path, you know, uh, then it should be obvious that they are not middle path. Uh, the key is to find out which individual or group is being the most disruptive or dissonant. And if you'll notice, I'm using the words dissonant. I'm using the words harmonization. Uh, these are key factors in determining who is middle path and who is not, what is middle path and what is not. Obviously, if you're in the middle path, you want to unify. That is key. Harmonization is key if uh, you're trying to cut back on dissonance. So, especially within your own you know, within your own label, within your own banner. I know I didn't answer your question in a 100% clear way, and that is because uh, these arguments have to be weighed on an individual level. Uh, you know, how many, how many ways can you uh, beat a chess game? You know, how many ways can, uh, you know, you win at poker? There are different strategies, different techniques, uh, different things that have to be uh, weighed. There's no 100% clear way to solve these things. So uh, different strategies may be employed to resolve conflicts. Uh, but the goal for each side should be a peaceful resolution, especially within the infrastructure of the middle path. Uh, the key point that I'm making is that conflicts are bound to arise. That's you know, inherent in nature. It's inherent in human nature. You know. And the goal of both sides is to seek either a peaceful resolution or a live and let live you know, resolution for the sake of the greater good. And that greater good is twofold, but um, I'll get back to that. What makes the middle path different from people who I consider false identifiers? How is the middle path distinct from those, those folks? This goes hand in hand with the question I just answered. Uh, this is where community, community comes into play. Uh, when you have a false identifier, who claims that they're middle path, but they're really doing everything to continually cause chaos, cause disorder, then it's clear that they're not middle path at all because the middle path has to do with harmonizing, especially within its own house. Um, if they work on their ego issues uh, for the benefit of themselves and for the movement, then good. You know, If they agree to disagree and, and go about their own way, then that's fine too. But if they continually cause chaos within the middle path, the very, and I mean very, last step would be to brand them as a middle path heretic and then root them out because harmonization is key. And if that continually happens, if they claim to be a middle path and they're dragging uh, the movement or whatever into the mud, then no, they got to be rooted out. Uh, again, community comes into play when this happens. Uh, perfect example that I could think of think of the Westboro Baptist Church. You know, are they considered by many Christians to be a Christian organization? Or even within Christianity themselves, are they considered to be lunatics without a moon? So um, that's where the whole community comes into play. That's where, uh, you know, when you have a false identifier, they'll be easily spotted, no problem. You talk about rising against some oppressors, and I agree, there's oppressive forces in our society. Whether they're a, a, a product, there you go, take a shot. Whether they're a product of the system and the way the system has evolved, or whether there's an actual, legitimate, purposeful, intentional oppression, it doesn't matter to me, the oppressive force is there. How does the middle path address this oppression? What is it about your middle path that actually engages those oppressive forces, resists, resists those oppressive forces? What about your middle path will manage or negate that oppression? Now we return to the tit for tat strategy, which I will link in the description of this video. Uh, in Wikipedia, I'm quoting directly, this strategy is dependent on four conditions which have allowed it to become the most successful strategy for the irritated prisoner dilemma. Um, number one, unless provoked, the agent will always cooperate. Number two, if provoked, the agent will retaliate. 
Number three, the agent is quick to forgive. And number four, the agent must have a good chance of competing against the opponent more than once. Uh, with concerns to number four, if the middle path is going to compete with uh, the major religions, it must be able to have a good chance at winning. Right now, uh, within the middle path movement as it stands, it's almost as if I'm standing alone. Um, now I know that others have made their own middle path, you know, um, such examples are uh, John and Lily Alley. Uh, Lily Alley wrote a book, I believe, called Left and Right of Center, or Right and Left of Center. Um, you know, some of our interests may coincide, uh, however, no alliances have been made at this time. So, in some ways, in a lot of ways, I am speaking on behalf of myself at this time. I'm, you know, I'm alone, but um, alliances are going to be a big part of the middle path, so that's what I'm pushing for. Right now, we're at a stage where we're we are building the groundwork, okay? Uh, the best strategy to employ would basically be to retaliate against criticisms, you know. Um, for example, a Christian would say, well, you know, the middle path is really just a tool for Satan to use. And, well, we could bring up examples of the, the Inquisition, the witch trials, both in Massachusetts and in Europe, etc. And we could basically call upon any which way that uh, Christianity has been used as a tool by Satan. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the groundwork at this point. There's really not much we could do. So... Uh, it's basically what the atheists are doing, except that we'd also be utilizing church status and tax-exempt status, hence the whole mundane aspect that I'm talking about, bringing it out into the world, uh, pushing it out into the world. Um, this brings me to another point, uh, as far as like donations go when it comes to uh, creating it like a, a church or that type of thing. Um, the money that the Middle Path organization receives should go towards legitimizing its position within the world for the benefit of its members, its practitioners. A uh, big example, uh, and this is thinking big, you know, the biggest example is uh, politicians, uh, religious, political agendas, etc. Now, if you'll notice, this is working specifically, I realize this is working within a capitalistic system, you know, any day now America could collapse and China could take over, we could be within another system in which the games change, but anyways, what I'm thinking about for now, as far as getting the tax-exempt status within uh, the United States, etc., is this. Um, every election and re-election period, you always see uh, political figures hanging out at churches. And why is that? They're collecting money. They're collecting campaign funds to get elected, re-elected. And what do they do in return? What tit-for-tat strategy do they use in return? Well... Uh, once they're funded by the churches, the churches will say, oh, by the way, could you do something about like that whole gay marriage thing? Sure, why not? We'll pass Proposition 8 and ban gay marriage. Or how about, uh, you know, you know, we're not really too fond of the whole stem cell research. It goes against our morality. Uh, sure, whatever, we'll forsake sci science. Yeah, we'll forsake science just so you're happy. You know, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. So... In the grand scheme of things, when you donate to a middle path organization, you know, thinking big, you're also getting into the political game and kind of negating that, in a sense, of saying, okay, we have somebody who says, I'm middle path, you know, like a candidate who says, I'm middle path, goes to your organization for campaign funds and say, oh, by the way, um, you know that Proposition 8 that was passed, could you, like, overturn that? Yeah, sure, no problem. Or how about, you know, that stem cell research could have gone towards... Um, helping out, uh, you know, towards n nerves and neuron research, etc. Uh, we're a couple years behind. Could you possibly, like, you know, put in some funding? Sure, no problem. Again, stepping into the political game and kind of bringing out more personal freedoms. That's the whole reason for, like, this supposed, you know, this limitation. I mean, it, it appears as a limitation at first, but what it's doing is actually trying to work for something more transcendental than that, both on a, you know, spiritual and a mundane level.